Tonight, as we come on the air, Ukrainian forces are mounting a fierce counteroffensive against Russia, officials claiming several victories as the White House scrambles to contain the fallout from President Biden's speech. In Ukraine, battles still raging and some optimism among Ukrainian forces claiming they've retaken two villages in the south as well as several in the north and east. Tonight, after the president's speech on the world stage, the administration walking back one key line after Biden said of Russian President Vladimir Putin, this man cannot remain in power. Today, Secretary of State Antony Blinken trying to clarify, saying that the U.S. does not have a strategy of regime change in Russia or anywhere else. Just before the president's address in Warsaw, Russian missiles striking in and around Lviv, only about 40 miles from the Polish border, firefighters working for hours to contain the inferno at a fuel depot on the outskirts of the city. And tonight, Ukrainian President Zelensky revealing his positions for ending this war. We have team coverage tonight from the region. ABC's senior national correspondent Terry Moran leads us off from Lviv. Tonight, Ukraine is pressing its counterattack on several fronts, claiming new victories on the battlefield. Government officials here say Ukrainian forces have retaken several villages around Kharkiv in the east. That's a city that's held out against Russian assaults for weeks. And they say more territory has been retaken near Sumy in the north, threatening Russia's overstretched supply lines. And villages outside besieged Mariupol in the south were also retaken, officials say. Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed his people overnight, and he accused the West of lacking the courage to take on Vladimir Putin, calling on NATO to give his country more tanks and planes, asking for 1% of its arsenal of those weapons. Zelensky described speaking with Ukrainian defenders in Mariupol, calling their heroism astonishing and adding, if only those who have been thinking for 31 days on how to hand over dozens of jets and tanks had 1% of their courage. Meanwhile, Russia continues to pound cities across Ukraine. The Russians released this new video of the missile strikes targeting fuel depots and defense infrastructure in the western city of Lviv and southwest of the capital city of Kyiv, damaging supplies for Ukrainian forces. Our James Longman on the scene. This is an oil depot. You can see the flames there burning. The city was meant to be a sanctuary for thousands, and now it feels like the war has come to them. Some of those attacks struck very close to the border with Poland, and right before President Biden delivered a fiery speech in Warsaw, where he issued this blunt warning to Putin. Don't even think about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. We have sacred obligation. We have a sacred obligation under Article 5 to defend each and every inch of NATO territory with the full force of our collective power. And then, in the last lines of his speech, perhaps carried away by the moment, Biden seemed to call for an end to Vladimir Putin's rule. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Secretary of State Antony Blinken quickly walked back Biden's words. We do not have a strategy of regime change in Russia or anywhere else for that matter. Republican Senator and ranking member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee Jim Risch called Biden's comment a horrendous gaffe and urged the president to stay on script. This administration has done everything they can to stop escalating. There's not a whole lot more you can do to escalate than to call for regime change. The Kremlin offered a quick and terse response. The president of Russia is elected by Russians, a spokesman said. The war grinds on. On the outskirts of Kyiv, shelling turned this neighborhood into a ghost town. The debris still smoldering. Yaroslav was here when the bombs fell. He says there were one or two story buildings. It's clear that there was nothing or no one here, no weapons at all. They have destroyed everything. In the southern city of Mykolaiv, troops watched for signs of Russian advances from their trenches. A captured Russian tank passing through a checkpoint. Unka is a soldier. He says, we are going to protect our country, our freedom, and our democracy. It does not matter what happens. We will stay to fight to defend the country until death. So many staying to fight. Terry Moran back with us now from Lviv. And Terry, we're just learning about a new interview with Ukrainian President Zelensky revealing his positions for ending the war. 
That's right, when Zelensky gave an interview to independent Russian journalists, sending a message that Ukraine would do a peace deal if Russia withdraws its troops to those territories it occupied before the war began in eastern Ukraine and Crimea. And in exchange, Ukraine would establish neutrality, not join NATO, and non-nuclear status. And the whole deal would have to be guaranteed by third countries, probably including the United States. Those peace talks will resume in Turkey tomorrow. Wit. Terry Moran leading us off. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.